So the properties of a parallelogram, all right? Um, one thing, let's go back to what we just talked about. You have two pairs of um, you have two pairs of parallel sides, right? And this is what we just proved in our last one. So that's why I, if I say, hey, if it's a parallelogram, or like questions one through four, it says prove, you know, tell me, is this a parallelogram or not? Well, if you can show that you have opposite sides that are parallel, yeah, it's a parallelogram, right? What about if you have two pairs of opposite congruent sides, all right? So guys, yeah, you can use the slope formula, but guess what? You can also show, hey, if these two sides and these two sides are equal in measure, then guess what? It's also a parallelogram, all right? So you can apply the distance formula to opposite sides. If you can find that the distances of two opposite sides are congruent, that means the same measurement, then you can prove that they're congruent. So you need to be writing this down right now. I, have, I already have it. Write that down, because you didn't do it on your homework quiz, so obviously you don't remember it, right? The next one, if you have If you have two pairs of opposite congruent angles, all right? Now, I know you guys have seen on your homework on one through four, if it says, if it shows you that opposite angles are equal in measurement, right, then you can see that it is going to be a parallelogram, all right? The next one, you could say that, um, If you take the diagonals, right? Let's say it shows you the diagonals of, I, that's understandable. I know that. But you didn't remember it when I asked you to do it. So you're going to want to rewrite them back down. OK? So um, if their diagonals bisect each other. So if you're shown with a figure, if I give you guys a figure that looks like this, it looks like a parallelogram, and it says these two are equal, those two are equal, what that tells you is the diagonals bisect each other. So therefore, it has to be a parallelogram. The other thing you can do is if you have these two points and you determine the midpoint, which is going to be right here, right? And you have these two points and you find the midpoint, and the midpoint's right there. So if their midpoint is the same for both opposite points, then that means they bisect each other, therefore it's a parallelogram. And the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is if you have one pair of opposite. Parallel and congruent sides. Okay, so we talked about hey, if both sides, if you have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. If you have two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent, it's a parallelogram. But guess what? If you can show me that one pair that are opposite sides are parallel and they're congruent, that also makes it a parallelogram. All right? Guys, it's going to be very difficult to be able to go through your homework and through this chapter test unless you know these very, very well. All right? So that's why I was telling you guys to write these down. You have to know the properties of parallelograms because we're going to be moving on now to properties of rectangles. Yes, Damon? One, two angles that are vertical to each other also be segregational. Well, not, not segregational, but are Supplementary? Supplementary. Remember when you, just real quick, off the topic. These are vertical angles, right? Right? The intersection of two lines. Vertical angles are opposite each other, share a vertex, but not do share a side. Are they supplementary or do they equal each other? They could be supplementary, but. Like a parallelogram. Huh? Like Well, we don't have any vertical angles here. Vertical angles only happen when you have intersecting lines. Talking about the angle and the other angle on the same side. Oh, you're talking about consecutive interior, right? 
And yes, the consecutive interior, yes. You can also show that when you have consecutive interior angles, um, that will be a property of your parallelograms. Um, I just want to focus on like the sides and angle, but yes, you can also show that you have consecutive interior angles. Um, that can show you that you have a, uh, well, it's not going to show you have an error, but, but when you have a parallelogram, you have consecutive interior angles. But just because you have consecutive interior angles is not always going to prove that you have a parallelogram. Okay? Unless you have two sets of them, I guess you could probably say. Well, that still won't even show it. All right? But so of a parallelogram, consecutive interior angles um, are, supple you know, are there. But just because you have consecutive interior angles does not prove you have a parallelogram. Okay? So yes, that is a characteristic.